we have the F32 back with a cage in it. Well, tacked in it as we are. Why well, give me that look? Uh, but this is this is cage number two. We did we did have it back with a cage in it before, but we wanted to do better. So this is cage two, rev two. Um, and final version of what we feel like is an optimized cage because we know from racing these cars, it, you know, there's a, there's a cage that's a safety thing and then you take it a step further and a cage is part of the chassis of the car. And we've seen def differences of, you know, up to a second on like a Specky 46 car where uh, there's a cage that meets the minimum requirements for safety versus there is a way to optimize cage that works on strength of the chassis, et cetera. So, that's why we do a cage kit. So we can bring that level of fabrication and tube bending and all the things that make building a cage tricky. And I know there's guys that can build cages that's, you know, totally. no doubt, but um, the fact is this is a very complex cage with multiple bins and it's very difficult. And even in our shop, we just don't spend the time because the cage kit is optimized and we use it. It makes our life easier, faster, and the result is awesome. So yeah. Rev2 cage. All right. <laughs> So Rev2 Cage, uh, what do we not like about the first one? You know, you, you go through prototyping, you go through testing parts, you get something in your hands and you're like, oh, maybe I can do that better. And we were looking at it and we're like, I mean, it was pretty good, right? It was actually pretty good, but we knew that we wanted to enhance it a little bit and make it better, you know? And one of the big things that we were looking at was headroom space where the A-pillar goes against the, where it tucks up in here because we wanted to get it super tight to fit a range of drivers, including a guy like this to, who knows, Carrie, my wife, who's pretty small, and be able to fit all of those in between. So yeah. we were able to do that. You know, one of the tricks here is this was a sunroof car. It is a sunroof car. And there are these little nodes that come underneath the, the roof that kind of blocked the access for getting the A-pillar really tight against the body. And we know that we also want this cage kit to fit F8X cars, which are carbon sunroof car, carbon sunroof, carbon roof cars, no sunroof, which don't have those nodes. And it would just look a little bit funky in those things having a little extra space. So we decided to cut those nodes out and see how tight we could get it. And well, I think it's looking super tight. As you can see, James now has all kinds of headroom in there. Yeah, generally when I sit in a car, I look to have, um, as I'm sitting here, and this seat is higher than I would choose to sit, but if, if I choose to sit with my, my head height, which head height and eye height to be able to see over the hood is kind of the same, whether you're short, tall, etc. So you kind of have to base this on the head. And, you know, I have a helmet on when I, when I have this, you know, when I'm racing this car, when I care about it. And so I want, a fist of clearance from my bare head to the cage, to any point on the cage, that gives me the room that I'm comfortable with because you know the head is the most important thing in this whole environment. I'd like to keep this for Monday morning after I'm done racing, no matter what happens. And you know, if this seat rocks in a, in a big side impact, if uh, you know big impacts and you're, you're flopping around a little bit, you gotta have clearance on your head and it's not good enough to sit in here rev one cage and say oh i think that's good enough that's that's close on the clearance we can put some cage padding padding on that and it'll be okay it's not okay you need enough clearance on the head so that's that's what we've done in this rev two we've gotten rid of those uh factory sunroof cassette mounting points uh it's a clean cut it's easy to do we'll have templates for that and it doesn't damage the paint on the outside of the car which is pretty sweet and it gets the cage with compound bins. By the way, this whole cage is CAD designed and made to follow the absolute tightest path it can on this car while being easily able to weld this thing in the car because you know I could slam it right up against the outside of the car. You'd never be able to weld it 360 and so that doesn't really do anybody any good. But um, we, we designed it with those two things in mind and it's a super tight fit. Yeah, super tight fit. You know, James mentions being able to weld around all these things. I mean, if you look in the car, well, you're not really gonna be able to get a 360 weld up here, but we have these plinth boxes in here, which what's in here are actually the prototype pieces. The production pieces are formed bent metal, and then the top plates will slide out and you'll be able to drop the cage down and be able to get 
your welds all around up here. And we've kind of designed this as well, you know, similar to other cages we've designed where you can break this thing up into chunks and put it in in pieces. You, you tack the thing in, you got your back section, you got your whole left front section, your whole right front section, and you're able to kind of just piece this thing in for uh, and, and do the full welds on most of the pieces outside of the car to give yourself a little bit easier time installing yeah. this thing. Yeah, you're gonna marry those sections once they get back in. The back session, the left front, right front, and then these bars are, are easy to put in. Um, by the way, while I'm sitting in this, um, one of the awesome features of this car from the factory and GT4 cars, et cetera, for racing is this adjustment of the column. So this doesn't have our, our final cage bracket in it yet, uh, but we are hanging the factory column with the factory adjustments so that you'll be able to bring the wheel to you up, down as needed to see through, see the gauges, to see over, to see the road. Um, you know, basically it's just, you know, able to make this thing fit you exactly right. Yeah, we've got uh, our typical as well, X brace, X bar for the door bars with some intrusion going out, give James a nice little bit of elbow room over there. Yeah, no, uh, you know, super important to me when I'm turning the wheel on this thing that my elbow cannot reach the door bar because it's not about what I'm doing when I'm turning this, it's about what happens again in the side impact and I don't, you know, even with cage padding, I don't want to bang my elbows on that, but certainly while I'm driving, I don't want to have to work around a door bar to, to turn my car. That's pretty irritating. Uh, other things, you know, standard foot protection, got to protect your feet, protect James's little toes. He's over there. Uh, what else? What else? We, in the initial design video, we were initially going to land the rear bar right here at the rear wheel well, but for installation purposes and also for making sure it was a bit more repeatable, we ended up going to this rear floor area at the back for the down bars. And that's also the same location uh, in the F8X cars. So F32, F8X, trying to make this thing fit both of those applications. Not trying to, we are making those things fit both of those applications. Um, yeah, I mean, just reiterating what James said, you know, this is CAD designed. Everything is repeatable here. Everything is notched so that when you get this kit, you know what you're getting and should make it simple for you to install. We, uh, we've got to work on getting this baby out and then work on an instruction document. We'll have a whole instruction booklet to provide with this thing to help guide you through your install. And yeah, I think we're going to get working on that here soon and get this baby up on the website at goodoldbimworld.com and get this car out to the racetrack. Ready to go? Should be an awesome race weekend. We are ready to kill it this year. It's good. It's going to be a wild ride.